Come on, Lukey. You don't want to try the cream spinach? It felt like this was the time to, to sort of add some kids to the mix of the show. It's sort of one of the milestones that happens as people, you know, grow up, get their acts together. Some people have kids, some people don't. And it seemed like a really interesting way to go story-wise for our characters. Yeah, no, we got a couple kids. We got, we got finally have an Addison baby and an unexpected Charlotte inheritance. Are you my dad? The extent to which kids have appeared on the show, all of them have been relative surprises. And I think also it, there's an atmosphere right now. Very often this stuff tends to come from what's going on around you and us. And, and in our To lives. be really honest, there are a lot of people having babies and adopting babies mm -hmm. and welcoming new children into their lives. The birth of a child is one of the most monumental events of anyone's lifetime. And it comes with a whole host of, of reasons to celebrate, but also uh, potential problems. And therefore, something that could be dramatically well utilized for our show. Oh, gosh, the way you think about the world changes so radically. Having kids come on the show has been great. It's definitely kind of given us all um, a little more energy. Earlier today, we were doing a scene where it's the season finale, and uh, Sam asked Addison to marry him. And uh, literally, on one of the takes, the baby who was playing uh, Henry pops the bottle out of her mouth and looks up at me after, like, well, what are you going to say? It was, like, ridiculous. It was really, she's so tuned in and very curious in kind of what's going on. But they're so cute and amazing, and it just, uh, it's really fun. But it's awesome. I mean, it's, you know, you, you I mean, really having a, especially a baby baby on set, you, you, you behave on a set the way you probably should behave on a set, which is speak quietly. <laughs> okay, buddy. It's bedtime. Thank you, Gary? Night-night, Daddy. Can you say night-night? Night-night. Life does not stop. So the idea that Pete and Violet are going through, you know, what they're going through, but it's not like Lucas ever goes away. I mean, they're having the conversation. I mean, I think about that in my own life. Like, you're having these, you're trying to have these adult conversations, and there's this entire layer of life that goes on. And I think that's what's awesome about shooting with a kid, because they don't lie. I mean, they're just behaving the way human beings behave. I, uh, I'm having a CX with a 29-year-old. And I had an I-N-T-E-R-C-O-U-R-S-E in an elevator. I know you did, with an S-L-U-T. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed a lot of that stuff, like the strain, playing the strain of a marriage, but um, in a much more grown-up way. I mean, they can't fall apart. They got this other spirit that they're looking out for. I had no idea at the start of this season, of course we never do with Shonda, I'm not even sure that she does what she's going to unfold for the characters. I have a new baby right now and she's three months old and pretty much the same age that Henry is, you know, it seems. I have no new baby, but similar. I hold her new baby and pretend I have a baby. baby. Yeah. And then I go home and see my dog. In real life, I have a daughter and a son, and I, they're very different people and I parent them really differently. Anything I do now is, being, is informed by the fact that I'm a father. I mean, it just changes you so profoundly. One of the beautiful things about this season where uh, parenthood is concerned is that all of the people who have become parents this season have, have undergone huge changes in themselves. I can't give away Ryan's baby. So you're having Ryan's baby? Yeah. I'm having Ryan's baby. The whole program has been about uh, you know, growing up, like, mature, like, what happens when you get everything you want. One thing that I love that Shonda explores in this show, and particularly in this season, is how to become a parent in an unconventional way. His name is Mason. And he's... And this is... This is really not what I... Anyway, <clears throat> he's... Well... He's yours. For Cooper, it was um, particularly exciting, um, you know, showing up with a eight-year-old child um, was even a curveball to Cooper, who was somebody who's always wanted children, but certainly not that's not the way he thought it was going to go down. I love that Eric and I befriended one another. I love that I was able to take on this role of a mother in whatever version needed to be had. And I also thought it was really special once we found out the sad news about Erica, uh, that we all rallied and wanted to give Mason the best possible next step. 
What was so great to watch was the relationship that developed between his character and Charlotte's character. Yeah. Which was just this, over the course of the season, one of my favorite things to watch. Well, I think, you know, one of the big lessons for Charlotte was watching um, Erica, mother Mason, and even while she was so sick and, and dying, how she mothered Mason and how she, the things she, not just told Charlotte about this is what you need to do for him and he's gonna need a mother, but the, the things she did for him um, as an example to Charlotte. What can I do for you? <laughs> Teach him how to drive a stick. <laughs> Before you ever let him drive an automatic, teach him how to drive a stick, so then he'll never be stranded, okay? Okay. And don't push him too hard on his grades. He's smart like Cooper, but he's too hard on himself. So don't add to that, okay? Okay. And talk about me. You'll be his mom, but... No. You will always be his mama. Whatever happens. Always. He needs a living mom. He'll need you. You get that? Cooper's not enough. He'll need you. It's a hard role because kind of all the emotion and sometimes you don't know how you're supposed to act and how you want to act, how you need to act. And so if your character's supposed to act one way, you'll think it's the other and some scenes are just like that and they're really hard. Telling me the truth. This is all of it. Yes. This is all of it. Thank you. You're welcome. Griffin is insanely good. And what he does. Like has a lot of experience doing both comedy and drama. Mm -hmm. And I think you and the writers really, when you discovered what kind of kid we got, because Look, it's very challenging to find a child actor who has all the range you need because they're just a kid. I have loved working with that child so much. Griffin Gluck is the best addition to our cast we've gotten, I guess, since Benjamin Bratt. That kid is amazing. I mean, he's just a great actor. He's a great kid, first of all, but he's also a great actor, and that, you know, makes all the difference. So much of the emotional lifting was on, put on his shoulders, and, um... I just got to be in scenes with him and, and, and react to him. And when you're dealing with a real kid, especially one that can act, you, know, you have to do a lot less than you think. You know, the world of private practice is not, you know, just a happy, cheery, fun world. In this world of, you know, things are fairly dark and, and who gets those nuances and complexities, it, it's really hard to fit a kid in. And, and we got uh, a Mason who can do it all. If it's a crying scene, I usually either put myself under peer pressure about if I can't do this, then the scene's gonna be ruined. Or I just imagine my parents, or one of my parents in the hospital bed, because that's mostly what uh, the scene's about. Your mom is tough. The only thing in the world she really cares about is you, which is why she doesn't want you to watch it get worse. She doesn't want you to see her when it's really bad. She wants you to remember strong and healthy and happy. So tomorrow, we're gonna take you to say goodbye to her. I can't see her after tomorrow. Well, your mom, she wants to protect you. She must be so scared. Yeah. whose goal since the show began was that she wanted to have a baby, it seemed like the right time to give her um, that dream. She didn't tell me how it, it was going to happen, but um, she kind of hinted. She's like, I think you might deliver your own baby. I got here as fast as I could. Mm -hmm. Traffic. I know. Well, I, I just, I hadn't heard from you in a while, and I just assumed, anyway, and uh, you got a call so late. This just... won't be the last time a baby wakes you up late at night. You've seen Addison go through this whole thing of trying to get pregnant with fertility treatments and that, and Addison trying to adopt, and then, you know, considering surrogates, doing the whole kind of crazy 21st century thing that we're all, you know, inundated with now. And, uh, and then finally, it just comes as a total gift and surprise. My agency got a call this evening. Mother delivered a baby she won't be able to keep. Thinks you're a good fit. Wait, she thinks I'm a good fit with me, OK? I'm a good fit? Birth mother went through the book of prospective mothers, chose you, wants to see you. 
Uh, okay. You want to comb your hair? Or do you want a baby? There was originally this idea that she'd wait and wait, and like, because what happens after that? And, uh, but she was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. Judy? I couldn't believe when I saw your picture. I figured it's meant to be, right? Do you want to hold him? One of the amazing things about, about parenthood as a theme on this show is, is watching these characters who have had all of these, you know, dramas and struggles and personal, you know, battles going on, have these kind of helpless children, these beautiful, valuable, miraculous children come into their lives, and suddenly it's not all about their personal drama. Give them to me. Really? Yeah, I'll take Are it. you sure, it's Sam? Fine. It's fine. Oh, Sam, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, who was Sam, Henry? His bottle's in the fridge, his blanket's in the dryer, and the nanny will be here in an hour tops, right? I got it, I got it. Bye, Henry. Say bye-bye to Mom. Bye-bye, Henry. See you later. Yeah, she has a way of doing that, doesn't she? Children into a mix of these, this largely dysfunctional group just kind of makes things more complex and more interesting. Which I think is a really beautiful thing that, you know, it's not, you know, I think sometimes when people, oh, the Edge, it's, they're still really fascinating characters, but you're now seeing them love these, you know, little people, and so it opens up all the characters that much more. None of us know the future, but I do know that I have certainly been pitching a lot that Charlotte gets pregnant, because I think that'd be really fun. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens to little old private practice.